I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the Drive Home to Hawkesbury, where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property, and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live, love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you, so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching the drive home to Hawkesbury. Today I'm joined by Catherine Hams. How are you, Catherine? I'm good, Rachel. How are you going? Very good, thank you. First day of the week and um, we've been doing lots of things. It's been a little while since we've caught up online and I just wanted to check in with you because there was a couple of things that we've been working on, I suppose, um, over the last couple of months and um, I guess we wanted to share that with everybody here today. Um, tell me, how's the, you know, it looks like you've had your hair done. Tell me all about that. You've, you've got um, some news, some exciting news to tell. I have. I um, At the end of last year, I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease. That's an autoimmune disease. And uh, basically, my thyroid isn't in a happy position in life. And the other things that came with that was detox and very heavily with toxins and heavy metal toxins. Anyway, just before that happened, I went and got my hair done. And I've always had a problem with hair dyes because I have very bad allergic reactions yes. to the point that I ended up in hospital. And I had a very bad allergic reaction and um, that feared me on having to um, go back to the hairdresser. And because I've got my son's wedding coming up in about a month's time, it got to a point I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do? Well, because I've been with the hash Hashimoto's and doing the supplements, I've been doing a very heavy detox, uh, very heavy in the fact that it's working but not damaging myself at the same time, so being kind and using different methods, not sticking to one. So I thought, I'll have a go and see how I go with it. Yeah. So I went to one hairdresser and they did spot tests and I could feel the heat coming through and a bit of irritation. And um, I was talking to my niece and she was talking about organics. So I thought, I'll, I'll go all organics and see what's happening. And I found this place up in Richmond and um, I went in there and uh, they talked me through the whole process. Uh, I was getting my hair uh, permed before. I didn't need to do that. He reckoned he could cut back into my hair how it used to be and that there was an organic dye. So very I happy. I got my last oh, term oh. done in the 80s. So probably Thank good, you, you know. <laughs> but, but you see, there you go. If yours either really was got good strength, very good hold, or I <laughs> no, no, no. one of the two. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so we did it. Anyway. You got a natural yeah. curl going on anyway, so do, you don't yeah. be needing the. Uh, I yeah, I think so. It looks good. It looks good. So yeah, it's all thumbs up and everything great. So great big thank you to Sam up in Richmond. So yeah. Aesthetica, it's called. And in my uh, Facebook page, I'm doing an interview with either him or the owner tomorrow. So that could oh, be awesome. something if you want to have a look at that. They can you know see what they're all about. So yeah, yeah that's what I've been up to. So a little bit of a new me. <laughs> I think so. It looks good. And and I think that's um, what the Drive Home to Hawkesbury is all about, just platforming different businesses in the Hawkesbury and talking about different things that we enjoy and love doing and also the people that become um, part of that community and who are that community and make it so great. So it's good to, to do that interview with Sam and I'll be really interested to hear all about that. And um, also you're involved with uh, NLP and also hypnotherapy um, and lots of other good things that you've been doing over the years, haven't you, Catherine? I have. I um, did with the Beyond Blue, I did a few speaking gigs around the Hawkesbury area and um, I'm now doing them privately as well. So I've done a few for uh, aged, so for the aged community, I've got in there and we've done a few interesting things and I've got some really exciting things to do with them later in the year. So anyone in the age community that wants uh, someone to come and speak about life or anything, nutrition, all that, I'm quite, you know, willing to do that. And the other thing I've been doing is uh, trying to get people to understand what anxiety is about, uh, suffering it so badly myself for seven years and how it crippled me. I really feel for people that get boxed in with anxieties or phobias or habits that don't suit them. So... I'm trying to get out more and do those speaking gigs around the place. Um, look, fireys, anyone, 
Boris want me to do it, I'll do it for them, PTSD, and mm -hmm. they can open it up, and gold donation to the fireys or something, gold coin or something, um, and workshops. So they're the things I'm focusing on this year. Yeah, no, that's terrific. And and I think it's a real passion of yours. You can tell when you speak about it that it's really important and it's something that sits right at the top of the list for you. And I think that that's yeah. great. And the people that I know that are involved with with the programs that you run and also the, the business that you do, um, they've benefited greatly from that. So um, I think it's a really good thing. One of the videos I was watching the other day that you did was on I guess on doing things differently and that's what we like to do in real estate is just when everybody else is zigging we're zagging but when people are thinking that that's that's what we've done for 30 years and that's what we're always going to do that's when you've got to think about doing something differently and you were talking about often it's a fear base that people get stuck in that mindset and they need somebody to actually release them from that or allow them to think a different way because nothing's ever either right or wrong it's just the way we see, see things and perceive things so it's good to have that independent person I've always found that um, having a coach is, is a positive thing in our lives and and I think by you know looking to other countries and other cultures is also a positive thing in people's lives too and uh, I've always done that over the years in the business that I'm in and as I say I think it's really important to to challenge yourself every day and just to think okay well what can I do differently how can we do it better what's our morning routine what does our day look um, you know how can I serve somebody better today and uh, I think that's essentially what you're looking at doing and, and have helped with people um, so tell me a little bit about that um, I think that's interesting that you said how can you serve someone today or what can I do for someone and I mean it's great that we do that thinking of what we can do for people but we also forget to do for ourselves mm. and I think that that's you know and not just saying that there's not single uh, dads out there there's single dads out there there's single mums and there's working people and there's people that look we're in all different walks of life and no one is greater than the other it's just what is but the one thing we seem to forget a lot of is ourselves and that it's actually okay to be selfish, you know, in a good way and balanced. Um, so uh, recently, like I was getting out and trying to lose weight because, you know, wedding coming up, got to do the right thing. And I put a lot of weight on with the Hashimoto's too. And um, I was going to the gym a couple of days a week and I play racquetball and stuff like that, which I love. I think you know about that. And um, then... What happened is I was sort of in a position where, well, um, do I go by myself or don't I? So normally me would go, no, I won't, because going to a gym and anyone who's a little bit overweight, it's a very um, frightening experience at times. You've got a lot of people, sure. usually they're thin there. They're not usually really grossly overweight or even overweight. And so and they've got these lovely little tight sort of things on and bright colours and they all look nick, 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 and you all look at them and go, oh, my God, am I ever going to get like that? Well, we don't really want to get like that, all of us. No, but what we want to do is we want to just tone or tune in. So um, in uh, January when I started going to the gym, I would not have gone by myself, no way in the world. I was scared, I was not confident, and my self-esteem was probably low. Now, I about two weeks ago, I went off for the first time and I played racquetball by myself. I rode, um, I did some cross training, and I actually find it really empowering. I mm. found it empowering to the fact that I stepped outside my comfort zone. I achieved it. It wasn't really that bad. The endorphins in me, they're jumping around going, yeehaw, hi, Catherine yeah, Jean, yeah. you know, that's great, you've done that, and <laughs> it's excellent. And yeah. So, I mean, it's and this is what happens. We get into these mindset places where we get caught in habit and habit mm -hmm. can be what drowns it. So breaking habits, having change, brilliant positive things. When we were a child, we'd go and climb a tree and not think about the consequences of falling or doing this. We'd go and do it. But as an adult, we always are thinking of consequences. Mm. Yeah, we forget about the consequence of life and living it. Mm. So, 
Yeah. No, it's it's really fascinating, and it, it's good, like that you say that's important to remember ourselves too in the equation because whilst we can look at um, others to support and, and provide for them, it's also important to, what do they say when you're in the airplane, oxygen first to yourself and then to others. So um, it's essentially okay. what you're saying, you know, look after the racehorse and uh, then everybody else will, will benefit from that as well. So, and I think too, we all benefit from that. I know, um, we are racquetball buddies um, during the week, and that's great. And I know I've uh, missed it the last couple of weeks, and we're back on decks next week. But that's great that you've been getting out there and, and doing the racquetball. It's hard playing by yourself up against a wall, isn't it, with the, with the <laughs> ball trying to keep it in the same position and trying to sort of, you know, switch it up a bit and make it interesting. But, um, you know, it's also challenging going into the other areas of the gym too with your, you know, cross-training and the rowing and, as you say, there's loads of people that go to the gym, but um, it's important that we all just go, you know what, it's okay. We're all on our own journeys. We're all doing our own things and we're all at different stages and places in our lives and it's okay to be where we are. And I think what happens is that when we look at these things and it's like your, your birth of consciousness, it's like when you first yeah. realise that there was things that were different to you. Like if you're on an island by yourself, you wouldn't know whether you were the wrong shape or the right shape, the right height, the wrong height or anything like that because it would just be how it is. But yes. um, when you go into a gym or something, you tend to look at yourself as though you're in the mirror and mm. thinking, oh, my God, how will everyone look at me? When they're all looking in their own mirrors, thinking, <laughs> no one's oh, my God, about, how well, look, Everyone's worried about everybody they're else. They're not thinking. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we tend to think more about ourselves <laughs> in such a negative way then what other people are not even worried. They're too worried about their own selves, their egos. They're looking yeah. after that. So Yeah, yeah. I, I think it, that's it so true. true. Yeah, and I think as we get older, we realise it doesn't really matter, you know, just give it a go, get in there and, um, you know, I, I often go kayaking by myself and out on the water and it's the best thing to do because, you know, whether it's first dawn of light and, or whether it's um, – nighttime sunset or whether it's during the day it doesn't matter the bird life on the water with the you know you can just see lots of water dragons you can see lots of birds sort of flying in grabbing the fish eating the fish the fish jumping around it's fascinating and you learn a lot about yourself too when you're out there you know on the water and doing different things and um it's getting back to doing the things that you're that really um serves you and, and looks after you as you said before isn't it it is it is All and i think stuff. that we, we forget to live life. That's yeah, what I think we yeah. forget to do. And yeah. we let the and, – and I don't I don't want anyone out there to think, well, it's all right for her to say she doesn't have the bill, she doesn't have this, she doesn't have this, that and the other. But I've raised five children. I know what it's like to have a business, to raise children. I know what debt's like. I, I speak to people all day long with that. And I don't minimise that at all, not at all. But, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could worry in a really good manner about that instead of worrying in a way that makes you sick and mind and mapping. And that's sort of like my workshops about mind mapping, doing things like that. Yeah, that was what I was going to segue to is the, the worry well workshops that you've got available. And I think it's really important that um, people know that they can think about things, but it's a matter of um, working out how the best way to do that. And I think sometimes too, just having that, um, extra person to, to help along the way. So they're coming up in the next couple of months, aren't they? They are actually. I probably will start releasing dates in May, I think, is when I'm doing that, but that's when they're coming out. And um, I'll just be doing them in the Penrith and the uh, Hawkesbury area. Hawkesbury. Start yeah. with and then later be looking at going online for some areas too, doing it online as well. But I think um, what people have got to understand that when they – can't sleep and do things like that, it usually comes back to something that's totally, could be something you're worrying so much about and if you could just ease it mm. and get mm. that sleep, the picture mm. will look so different the next day. Mm. And I that, had a that, client that's that's nice. so important you were saying. So go on, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I had a client the other day and um, they were really concerned about a, a property that they had and they were in the cooling off period and unsure as to whether the buyer was going to proceed with the sale. And uh, for all intensive purposes, the buyers, you know, they want to do the right thing. They've put the deposit down. They want to buy that house. They want to move forward on things. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer with the finance 
you know, obtaining the valuation or getting the pest and building or whatever it might be in that cooling off period for the buyer. So, you know, sometimes I say to the owners that are waiting for that deposit to come through, don't worry about it until I tell you to worry. And um, it, it is a difficult thing for people to sort of, I guess, take on board because they say it's okay, but we don't know what the outcome is. And it's like, yeah, well, worrying about it's not going to help either. So if we just sort of let the process do what it's got to do, we've positioned everything in the best possible way. And generally you'll find that the outcome is positive because the positive energy has been put in there. Whereas if you worry about things, it doesn't matter what it is in life, you know, sometimes you give it that energy and that energy then allows that thing to manifest in your life. So you're better off just being positive and you're better off looking at the positive sides of things as much as some days you wake up and you don't want it to be positive or you're not thinking that the day's positive or that anything's going right. But sometimes you just have to keep on keeping on knowing that the next day is going to be better and the day after that's going to be better than that. And I think that's essentially what you're saying. I, I think so. I think that it's like silent steps. As long as you try to think the next step, even if you don't walk it, it's a mm. silent step and it's mm. always progressive in that mm. way. And the thing is that the, the, if I can give anyone out there who gets this today and listens to it, if you're trying to get out of a place where you're stuck, where you're worried, you've got anxieties or anything like that, distraction. Think about mm. a purple mm. and pink dotted spotted goat. <laughs> Serious. Because Absolutely. when I say that to yeah. my clients and they say to me, what? And I go, well, are you worrying about the other thing? No, but how did you come up with that? And the gain, they've gone off on it. So you're right. <laughs> they're not giving any life to that negative situation. And yeah. if you don't give life to it, it can't survive. And it's with your brain, you've got a, it's called neuroplasticity and it's how we wire our brains in. And you have to try and distract and get rid of, break that, that wiring. And you can do it. You, you can do this. You do it with training and all these sort of things, which, you know, it, it's, it's everything that you make up or you do or you create, you can uncreate it and you can make mm. another pathway. It's choice. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's great. And so if somebody wanted to find you, Catherine, how can they get in touch with you? Do you have a Facebook page or a mobile number that you can leave for people? Yeah, um, look, the Hypnotherapy Hub is on Facebook. So they can either look that up or they can either just look me up on Facebook and they'll get it. Or my yeah. phone number is 0408 411 865. And if you ring now, <laughs> <laughs> is there a free set of steak knives or something with that? No, no. <laughs> Actually, I've got carving knives. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all good. And if anybody's got any questions in regards to real estate, I'm always happy to help. I'm always looking at zigging and zagging with different people. So we're happy to look at the alternatives. And, and I guess everybody's unique and we've all got different situations. And um, it's a matter of working together in the local community to help one another get Get there at the end of the day but thank you very much for your time today Catherine I really appreciate it I think that this is going to be a more of a regular gig we're going to try and get on at least uh, get onto the um, website at least once a week and just sort of have a catch up see where things are going with people and what the questions are that are coming through because we have had a few questions that we will be addressing um, from a week to week basis I'd say if you're up for that Catherine are you good for I'm a up weekly for that. if people want to if they want to send questions to me or to you mm -hmm. about you know, the real estate, yeah. and I, I really, it's important because buying a home is such a big, well, it's their biggest cost, isn't it, that you'll ever really buy something, isn't it? I think so, so and I know. think a lot of people don't realise, you know, they they come into an office and then they, you know, it's 500000 or it's a million dollars or it might be more than that. I mean, the median house price is over a million dollars in Sydney now for a house and it's um, a lot to think about to put that sort of money. You don't go to Crown Casino and put a million dollars down on black or red without doing some due diligence. So it's uh, you need to know the right things, the right questions to ask, the right people to go to to ensure that, 
buying that house is a good experience because I think that there should be more real estate experiences that are good for people versus not so good. And I think once you've had a positive experience in real estate and once you've found that dream house or that house that you can do those renovations to or the house that you can, you know, move in with your partner that you're going to marry or you are married and you've got kids and you want to enjoy the lifestyle in, in and around the Hawkesbury, it's just a great thing to do. So uh, we're, we're always here and available for you, rachelgoldsworthy.com.au you and Catherine's at hypnotherapy hub so we can put those links up online and also we will um, check in once a week and uh, answer any questions that anybody puts forward as I say we've got a bit of a list running at the moment but we didn't want to inundate anybody with uh, those questions today but we'll certainly address those as they come through and um, we'll catch up with everybody on the next episode of the drive home to Hawkesbury Excellent. thanks for your time Catherine no worries. Catch up bye, -bye. bye. Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Walsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.